This is what we came for. Big barbel. Right under our feet. What a beautiful fish. Welcome back to the channel everyone and we are at a nice new fishery for me today. We're at Wall Farm. I've been fishing already. I've had a little go. It's fantastic. The fishing is amazing. So you're going to want to stick around because we catch there's just loads of fish to catch. I've been fishing shallow earlier, caught a load doing that, and I've been fishing in this little edge down here. And it's just fantastic. And I just love it. I'm falling in love with the place. I can't say any more about that. But what we're doing, we're fishing, for the purpose of this video, we're fishing really close in. We're fishing just a top kit and one. Really popular tactic on commercial fisheries. Fishing that inside ledge and that inside slope. And there's a couple of things that you've got to get right if you want to catch loads of fish with this method. It's very simple, but there's a few things you need to get right if you want to get the most from this. And Wolf Farm is one of them sort of venues where there is good depth close in. So where I'm fishing today is just a top kit and one just here in the edge. And it's, well, I'm not very deep, but I'm not very tall, but it's close to six foot, which is a good depth for any margin. In fact, I can't actually find much shallower water than that which isn't a bad thing because there's plenty of fish to be caught in this depth as I've already proved to myself. Now, the rig you use for this sort of fishing is really important. You want something heavy and positive. So I've got a half gram float on, nice thick tip, that three mil tip. I love this tip at the moment. I can see it, but more importantly, I can read it very well. I've got the pink power margin elastic on. It's just, there's a chance of even a double figure barbel in this lake. There's loads of carp, sort of three to six pound, but there's lots of barbel as well and there is a, a genuine chance of catching a double figure barbel today and when you're catching them close in you just don't want to be running around so i've gone for the heaviest elastic that we do and it to be honest it's just absolutely perfect because i'm looking at them plenty's coming out and i'm just landing them smoothly even the barbel aren't putting up too much of a problem today so very very good um the rig o19 strong nice and strong i've got two number i've got a lovely little short line six inches probably even not less than five inches between the float and the, the, the elastic connector that's because I'm, I'm trying to be dead accurate on this slope i'm talking to you about the slope in a second um and then having this little short line allows me to just lift into the bites and drop it straight back down if i miss it but also it allows me to be in perfect control of that rig like i said we've got the half gram float on and then because it's six foot deep i've talked about this in a recent video i've gone for like a staggered bulk of eights. So I've got how many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven number eights there in like a stagger. They're probably two inches apart. And I just think when you're fishing up against the ledge, they just sit nicely. I just think that that's better than a bulk personally and the bulk and two. I just think it's a bit more streamlined. I've got a six inch hook length. I've got a B911 extra strong on there, 16, little band. I'm gonna put an eight mil pellet on there. Speaking of bait, bait is really simple. I've got some six mil, and some eight mil fishery pellets. You could use probably maggots today because there's a lot of barbel about. But I've been told by Dax, the owner, that they love pellets anyway here. So we'll give them plenty of six mils. They seem to seem to be liking them. And I've got the eight mils for the hook. But I do like swapping between the two as the day goes on. So I'll show you a bit of that when we get fishing. And then when I, where I plumbed up, let me just get that, that to me. Ring. I'll map out the swim for you. So I've got this lovely little bush here it's like an, an island like here with a channel that's like an out of bounds area. You can't, no one can really get there. So I can imagine there's loads of fish held up in that little channel. But it, like I say, it's quite deep. And then what I've got is this deep slope coming all the way around here. And then it's probably six foot at the bottom of it. And then it's quite a steep slope. So it's, it's not like unfishable, but it is quite steep. And I'm sure in the summer, or maybe it's a bit warm, you could find a spot and actually lig a couple of worms on it or something. But because I'm fishing, it's a bit cooler today. I'm fishing at the bottom of that slope. And what I've done, I've plumbed up, plumbed up, plumbed up, found out where the slope finishes and then just gone about six inches further out. And that just seems to be working nicely. So that's what we're doing. The reason that I've got my float nicely dotted down. The reason I'm using an eight mil on the hook is because it registers on the bristle. So I can actually drag it. And if it's off bottom or if it's on, more importantly on bottom, like I've gone too far up that slope, the float will stick out a little bit more. So that's really important. So without further ado, let's get some fishing done because this is going to be a good one. Just a nice, enjoyable bit of fishing this is. Nothing technical, nothing like revolutionary, just a nice bit of fishing. Hopefully catch in some nice fish. Okay, let's get some fish caught. Now I've been trickling a few pellets in. Right next to this uh, little sort of 
little bush here that's uh, the end of a long line of bushes and it's amazingly deep, it's, it's got to be six foot. So I've got an half a gram flow on. <clears throat> and we're just gonna take it as it comes to start with. And I'm gonna use an eight mil on the hook. Now what, the reason I'm gonna use an eight mil rather than a six, I'm, I'm feeding sixes, but the reason I'm gonna use an eight is because I can feel it a bit better on my rig. There's a little bit of a funny little slope and then it flattens off and I want to be just at the bottom of that. And I know that if I drag my eight mil too high, obviously it'll register on the float and it'll mean, and it'll show up on my float. Whereas if I, I'm in the just the right spot, then my float will sit properly. Plus it might just give the fish a, something to pick out. So I'm just going to go in with 10 pellets every go to start with. And we're fishing just the top kit and one down this edge. And what I'm doing, Got a far length marker, as you should always have a far length marker. I'm just wrapping those six mils in, and I'm holding the, flicking the rig out, and I'm holding it as long as I can. And seeing you wait for the pellet and everything to come underneath your float, and then lower it down. And if you get your timing right, just like that, <laughs> it will go straight away. Now there's some massive fish in this lake, barbel, which I very much like to get amongst. But I think this is a carp. Yeah, nice one. Well, look how quick that was. Unbelievable. That. And that is one of the good things about fishing so close in. You don't get loads of false bites or anything like that. Look at that. Six pound, certainly five pound. Because the fish are so close to you, they almost sneak in the swim. So if you get like a deep peg like this, it's dead close, dead deep. It can be a brilliant place to fish, and that was the perfect demonstration of what I was just about to say. So that was a good stand, wasn't it? I'm not surprised, this place is just so good. Wild Farm, it's an amazing fishery this is. I can't believe I've not really been here much before. Me and Mick came a little while ago, and unfortunately we got hit by some cold weather and the fishing weren't great, but I promised me I'd come back. And the fishing today, I've been doing some shallow fishing and stuff. It's just been ridiculous. Anyway, that's by the by. So what I'm doing, I'm swinging that float out and I'm just letting it come under and I can see it when my float goes straight or near enough straight, I can then lower it in. And if you get your timing right, like I just did with that last fish, that fish was banging the top lip, it, absolutely perfect. They almost see the pellets come down and they just snatch it. Ooh, missed that one. I am gonna throw some pellets as well, but to start with, we'll just pop. Always a good idea to, the good thing about fishing this close in can enjoy a cup of tea. Missed another bite then, what's going on? Let's suss this out. Because this situation, granted probably not six foot, but a lot of venues, you do have deep margins like this. And sussing them out feed wise can be, you know, a lot of the time, like I'd plumb up there six foot and I'd be like, nah. Around the other side, it's it's shallower but rooty, and I don't fancy that at all. Whereas here, I think that this could be a good depth if I can just work out how to feed and, and fish for them. And then, oh, oh, really weird little indication. And the good thing about these big floats, big positive floats like what we've got on, is you can really like be aggressive, you can swing your rig in, you know exactly where it's positioned on that slope. Like I say, if I drag it too much up the slope, too close to this bush, the slope's quite steep, it's like that. I'm not saying you won't catch on that, but it can make things, make life quite difficult. Whereas, I've plumbed up, found the bottom of it, far bank marker, like you should always have, and we're fishing in the, in the same spot. Now I've not, I've just had a couple of false indications, so I'm just gonna pick up five pellets, I'm gonna just accurately throw them against my float like that. And let's just see if we get an indication or not. Yeah. Now that happens a lot, that, and I don't, don't ask me why, but you'll be fishing on the bottom in six foot, you'll throw your pellets at your float like that, and then you'll get an indication, and it'll be, it'll be on. I don't know whether the, the noise just encourages them to snap at it. But something goes on, it makes makes you get a bite. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is what we came for. Look at that beauty. Great big barbel. That is what we come for. 
right in the top lip as well. Oh, look at that. He's a strong fish. Oh, they're expecting a barbel, but maybe not that quick. <laughs> Let's have a look at him. I mean, he's a good one. They reckon they go to £10 in this lake, and even bigger. He's still got a bit of beans about him, he has, actually. Look at that. I mean, that one's certainly £4. I don't think he's any bigger than that. Great fish, though. Strong. Look at him. Absolutely beautiful. This is what we came for. Big barbel. Right under our feet. What a beautiful fish. Look at that. We'll pop him in there so he can rest up and then we can get him back. He didn't give much of a fight. And to be honest, they're the fish. The reason why I picked the pink elastic because when you've got a longish rig on, like what we've got on, and you're trying to catch, get barbel out, it can be a nightmare. And I think I did a, a short pole video at Tunnel when I was using quite strong elastic there and probably like over and above what you'd normally use for the size of fish that we're targeting. But when you're fishing short, you can normally get away with a bit of a stronger um, elastic than you can out in a lake because you, you, you're in a bit more con better control of the fish. You know, you're not having to worry about shipping back. You can almost boss the fish from the minute you hook it. But that fish just came as I threw them pellets in, which is a good sign. So I'll definitely be trying that again. <laughs> fish that one. That's another one of them. Didn't actually fight as hard as I was expecting. But this place is quite well known for the old barbel. Same process again, just letting that float swing in. And we're just having a bit of fun really. We're just enjoying a bit of fishing. But this is this is fishing, like now we're warming up, you can catch them, providing you've got a bit of depth, you can catch them close in like this. You don't although I've got my long pole set up for fishing shallow and stuff. Sometimes the best spot can be right by your feet. And in this situation, on venues where you do have barbel, if you've got deep water close in like this, God, it can be it can be such good fish, good fishing. So nothing immediately. I'm going to be much quicker to throw the bait in this time because it worked that last time. So, oh, indication. Now I'm not going to say that indication was because of the pellets hitting the float because it was a little bit of a delayed reaction. I've got to say, but it might be fish just there. And just just because you're fishing close in, don't forget your rules, your, you know, your firebank markers, your um, accuracy, like I'm right on the end of a pole, I'm using a pot I'm, and I'm trying to throw my pellets as accurately as possible. Just because we're fishing close in, the same rules apply as what they do out there. In fact, it's even more important because we're starting to deal with slopes and uneven bottoms and stuff like that. So you need to be precise. If you get it wrong, if you start laying loads of line on the bottom, it's probably not too bad for the barbel, they're, they're a bit more aggressive feeders, but for carp and stuff, you will foul look them in the fins and stuff, so it can be a great idea to um, make sure your plumbing and everything is, is absolutely cock on. I'm just going to trickle those pellets in. We know how, oh, little indication then when the pellets went in. We know, obviously, when you're fishing the long pole, that every time you throw or fire a pellet or two at your float, you'll get a little indication. Sometimes you get your bites. So having those pellets regularly hitting the water, just because you're fishing close in, can be just as important. See, I'd love to go into shallower water, but that slope to me just looks like a recipe for disaster. Foul up that one, unfortunately. I love this power margin elastic. <laughs> really shows him who's boss without being too strong. Might be in the mouth, you know. Yeah, I think it is. Little carp. The 
fit in here as well. Now I'm going to switch to the, to the 8 mils because I'm not 100% happy with how that's going. I think we can make this a bit cleaner, so let's just get some 8 mils out. There you go. We've got some 8 mils. They're eating them because we've got them on the hook, so we don't have to worry about that. But one thing, I just think that that makes things a little bit cleaner. And in my a recent video that was the other week, eight for the answer there, so let's try it again. So we're going to put in a few, like five, eight mils. Bit of rubbish there on the old rig. Let's get it in there. I mean, this is just great, isn't it? <laughs> How nice is this? Just fishing right under your feet. Back you up with them eight mils. And when I'm fishing with the bigger pellets, I love just throwing one or two at my float because they make such a noise. So attractive. I think they're just great bait. Sometimes it can be, it can make all the difference because you. You've just got less bait on the bottom, less stuff going on. But they're attractive because they make a noise. The fish obviously love eating them, love crunching them. Sometimes the old eights can be brilliant bait. No indication straight away. Right, again, the bite, as soon as the pellets hit the surface. Up. We did get one on the eights, but it took a bit longer, but it was probably a bit cleaner than what it had been with the sixes. And when you're using like this pink elastic, just guide them in, they don't need to bully them. The elastic does all the work for you. It's a totally different to playing them on lighter elastics, because you, you're fishing with a, you know, a powerful bit of kit. I'll get a little one. Yeah, you're playing them with a powerful bit of kit, so the last thing you want to do is pull any hooks out. We just we want to play them like a bit smooth. I'm going to go in, back, back in with the eights again, but I'll be quick to change again. No, no harm done if it doesn't work. Right, so we just we made that change to the eights, and to be honest, it hasn't worked as well as I'd hoped. And uh, you know I like to be honest with you. So I'm going to go back to feeding sixes. And I think the reason is, obviously you can just feed a few more pellets. You've got, you can sort of feed 10 to 20 pellets every go and not feel like you're feeding too much. Whereas when you're feeding eights, if you feed any more than sort of five or six, you can often feel like you're putting too much bait in. So I'm just, Letting that rig come in up against it, and I can almost feel it, and then it go, just slow it straight down. And having that 8mm on helps as well because it gives you, like I say, a bit of weight to work with down at the bottom end of your rig. And let's see if that switching back to the sixes gets us what we want. Because with the eights, it was I was tapping them in and not really getting any response. I did catch a couple of fish, but it wasn't as good as I'd hoped. So hopefully, by putting those sixes in. You get a bit more of a response, so I'm just gonna just take it steady. If I can, noise seems really important today. I noticed it when I was shallow fishing, like plopping the little rig in. Is really important so I'm getting little indication so oh <laughs> they're absolutely buried and I missed it yeah that was a buy that wasn't a liner absolutely buried that was bad angling on my part I shouldn't have missed that 
but they're definitely liking the noise today. Yeah. Oh, what have we got here? <laughs> Look at this little character. Hey. <laughs> Look at him, little instant. Look at him, little spots on him. I'm saying there's, there's definitely a few of them about today. You can tell when you're getting these little indications. Not really the one for the old eight mil pellet, them are they? All the pink zip for that matter. And it's just such simple fishing, but there's a little variables like say with feeding. Do you feed by hand? Do you feed with a pot? Ooh, little indication on the way down there. Do you feed sixes? Do you feed eights? You could even feed fours, but I, I do genuinely. I think fours would just give me a bit of an headache. And micros in this depth, six foot, not for me. Some people would probably say otherwise, but I just feel like I'm asking for problems. The only other thing that I could use is paste, but I, I think it's a, probably a touch too early for paste. Just my opinion. But that's not to say it wouldn't work. We stick to pellets. And to be honest, I think the sixes are actually working nicely. Let's plot them sixes in. Sometimes throwing in twice can can work well as well. I don't know why it's the same when you're fishing maggots, meat, whatever. When you're throwing bait in, sometimes just doing it twice can get your bites. I don't know whether the fish hear the first lot coming in and then follow the second lot down. Something happens anyway. So it's well worth doing. It's quite a nice little video this because it's showing everything happening in real time. There's a really weird indication here. I think that that was a little goldfish. I'd love to catch a nice carp to end on. Or even a barbel. Nice to catch a barbel, wouldn't it? That was a nice bite. Seems to me that throwing those sixes in is the answer today. Whether they just need a bit of encouragement with a noise or what, but there we go. Lovely one to end on. If you haven't been before and you live in this area, Northamptonshire, Wall Farm is, I'll tell you what, what a venue this is. <laughs> Look at that, right in the top lip. You wouldn't believe that, would you? Fishing in six foot of water and the, yet you're getting the signs like that. So there we go. Beautiful little fish to end on. Super simple tactics. All we're worried about is getting the plumbing up accurate, getting the where we're fish in the, you know, get, making sure we're fishing in the right spot, getting the, the bait choice right. And there's loads of fish to catch on these prolific commercials like this. But if you haven't been before, come to Wall Farm. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's just brilliant. I can't, <laughs> I'm just enjoying myself. I'm going to keep fishing actually.